118-272, offered by Mr. Roy of Texas. Pursuant to House Resolution 864, the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Roy, and a member opposed will each control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Texas. I thank the chair. The amendment that I'm offering here prohibits any of the funds in the Labor Age Appropriations Bill from being used to carry out President Biden's executive orders on climate change. Now, I've been offering this amendment to each of the appropriations bills. Uh, they have happily been accepted for virtually all of them, uh, and either by voice vote or on a roll call vote. And I think it is because particularly uh, colleagues on my side of the aisle uh, understand the absurdity of the president's orders and its impact on the American citizen uh, who are trying to struggle to be able to make ends meet, be able to afford their uh, cars, be able to afford their energy. And in this instance, these executive orders were responsible for the creation of the Office of Climate Change and Health Equity within HHS. I mean, when we're sitting here at $2 trillion deficits each year and $34 trillion of debt, and we've created an Office of Climate Change and Health Equity within HHS, it just tells you the absurdity of this administration. In September of 21, I sent a letter in opposition to the creation of this office, highlighting how absurd it is. And among its responsibilities are, quote, regulatory efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and criteria air pollution throughout the health sector, including participating suppliers and providers. The vast majority of emissions in the healthcare sector stem from the hospital electricity consumption. It seems to follow that where this office would focus its regu regulatory efforts would be on that. So does this administration want to make hospitals dependent on intermittent wind and solar for their energy? Will it ban the backup generators they depend on, which run on diesel and natural gas? Because you know, on a windless, cloudy day, you still need to have a hospital function. That's the whole point. My colleagues on the other side of the aisle seem to dismiss the whole notion of having reliable energy. Meanwhile, China has 1,100 coal-fired plants. America only has 250. China's building two coal-fired plants a week. We're building none. We're building no nuclear power, which should actually be reliable power, so that we can actually have zero emission reliable power. So my colleagues on the other side of the aisle seem to want to stand in the way of that, and FERC and the regulators want to stand in the way of that. But here we are, wanting wind and solar to be the unicorn power of the future, in which we can just live with hospitals not able to function. And that's the whole point. We're more concerned about, quote, health equity in an office of climate change than ensuring that people don't die because hospitals don't have the power that they need. I reserve. Any member claim time in opposition? Mr. Chair. Oh, for what purpose does the gentlewoman from Connecticut seek recognition? I claim the time in opposition. The gentlewoman is recognized. I rise in opposition to the amendment. I think this amendment is a good example of the Republican approach to appropriations bills. It is an overreaching effort to block seven separate executive orders related to climate change. Many of these executive orders have nothing to do with the Labor HHS Education Appropriations Bill. But we are here to protect the welfare of the American public, and we cannot close our eyes to the impacts of climate change, such as the recurring drought, flooding, severe storms, and wildfire events that have been pummeling our country and, for that matter, the world. As of last month, the United States has experienced 24 confirmed weather climate disaster events exceeding $1 billion in damages each, each one, 24, $24 billion, a new record. But instead of addressing climate change, this amendment would block funding to develop more resilient communities, mitigate the impacts of climate change, and protect future generations. This amendment would ensure that we continue to pay billions of dollars more each year for disaster relief. Though we don't seem to be able to get a supplemental bill that includes disaster relief for people who are struggling. But rather than more dollars for disaster relief that we're paying out um, every year, 
We would do that rather than invest in strategies that minimize and prevent the acceleration of climate change or mitigate against its disastrous effects. I urge my colleagues to oppose this amendment, and I yield back. The gentlelady yields. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Mr. Chair, the gentlelady and member of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, they raise issues about the fact that we're using appropriations bills to address some of these issues. Well, first of all, my constituents and most Americans I know of care how taxpayer dollars are used. They want these dollars to be used efficiently and effectively, particularly when we're running $2 trillion deficits. They don't want us to fund things like health equity offices, when in fact we are bleeding money out of every port of our body and we've got a uh, diminishment of our debt. We got ratings. We got Moody's last week saying, oh, wait, we're going to just reduce America's uh, debt rating. And we've got, uh, you know, the Treasury unable to carry out an auction last week because our debt is so high, people are starting to question investing in American debt. Why? Because we're irresponsibly spending money we don't have for utter nonsense and garbage. And that's what the American people see every single day. Why are you spending money on these absurd things, these absurd programs? That's the truth. The American people are sick of it. How about we actually authorize something, by the way, instead of just doing stuff in appropriations? We haven't even authorized DHS since we created it 20 years ago. It's absolutely absurd. I didn't even tell you the last time we authorized uh, HHS. Um, it's not even clear cut because there's so many programs in HHS. So the reality here is we have programs here the American people don't want us to uh, continue to fund. We're trying to put forward common sense ways to strip down and focus on the actual bare necessities of what the American people need us to fund. That's the point. That's what we're trying to accomplish. And I, look, I, I've got to say something I appreciate in the underlying bill, that we defund the ESG rule and requirements. I would remind you it's the President's executive orders uh, that allow uh, the Department of Labor allows ESG to creep into Americans 401ks, which are undermining performance, undermining the ability of the American people to earn a return on their investments because of all of these ridiculous ESG requirements. Meanwhile, we're making people suffer. The, the head of the Transportation Department, the Secretary of Transportation, literally was on record this year saying the American people need to feel pain. And I've gotten the same answer from every Democratic colleague that they want the American people to suffer so they can push forward this radical, nonsensical agenda. I urge my colleagues to support the amendment to stop it. Now yield back. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Texas. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of chairs, the, the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. It is now in order to consider amendment number 137.